Have you heard of a, a, a process called Podoshka? Called? I think it's Podoshka, do you, you said it? Podoshka? Yeah. And uh, I don't know a lot about it, but I just did a, uh, read a little bit about it. And it's de armoring. And um, there's uh, uh, <coughs> the person actually is masturbating while people of the opposite sex are massaging them to work through uh, sexual injuries, I suppose. Right. Um, can, I, can I make a comment about any form of working through sexual injuries with another person? Um, there is danger in working through them without being in a loving relationship. In other words, just pay, going to someone who's a therapist who then helps you work through your sexual injuries. Straight away, just the process of paying them sets up a transaction emotionally inside of you that is totally different from what you actually need sexually. What we need sexually is unconditional love. We need that at a sexual level. And so what happens often with any form of sexual therapy, often there are other people who we're paying being involved in the therapy. And there is a large amount of damage that, damage that that can actually give us if we're not aware of what's going on. So my suggestion is it's far better to work through every issue with God rather than with other people necessarily. Remember that you can work through all of these issues by yourself. You can, if you have the courage to do so. And sure, those kind of techniques certainly can de-armour you or get rid of your castle surrounding sex, if you like. But the problem with them is that there is often lots of different emotions in a therapist who's doing those kind of things to you. And there's also lots of different emotions in the spirits connected to the therapist who's doing those things to you. There's a reason why they chose that job. Does that make sense? So, for instance, a lot of like tantric sex therapists, for example, actually allow you to have sexual interactions with them in order to teach you things about sexuality. There is huge dangers in you doing that at the soul level because this is a paid interaction where there is no love aside from a, a very, like they say they love you, but in reality there is, some, there is no love. You don't, how can you love someone you don't even know and it's the first time you've ever met them, right? You get to know them and then love them that way, right? So when I'm talking about love being involved in action, I'm talking about love based on knowledge of who the person is and getting to know them, not love based on this very general agape type of love where you love everybody no matter who they are. Because if I did that, then I'd have sex with everybody. Why, why would I do that without having some major injuries? So if you've got a therapist, so here's a therapist, here's yourself. As soon as you enter into therapy, there's usually a paid amount that is usually paid therapy for a start, agreed? Right? So straight away you've set up a, a, a conundrum for your own soul, and that is they won't work with my injury unless they get paid. So is that unconditional love? No. So let's say now I have a therapist who doesn't get paid, and they're working through my sexual injuries. And I'm not talking about just talking about my sexual injuries. They're actually physically allowing themselves to have sex with you to work through your injuries. Or you are involved in a sexual act while they are touching you to work through your injuries. Now, if those things occur, what are they... The question you've got to ask is, what are they getting and what are they giving? There's got to be something going on inside of them emotionally for them to want to connect to many people sexually in a day other than the partner that they're with. What is that? What emotion is in them causing them to do that? Do you see what I'm saying? There must be some very, very highly charged sexual based injuries that cause them to want to have sexual interactions in order to... So obviously they think they're being helpful. They think they're healing this person. But why do they want to have sex with person after person after person or have sexual interactions with person after person after person in one day? And not with their partner. Like, not just with their partner. So there's got to be some major emotional injuries in the person for them to desire that even. Does everyone see what I'm saying? All right. 
Now, that being the case, they've chosen their profession, is that there are unhealed things within themselves, and that's why they've generally chosen the profession. Now, that bear, bearing that in mind, generally a sex therapist will have unhealed things sexually within themselves that they're dealing with. That attracts a group of spirits generally too, right? All surrounding them, so spirits surrounding them that now will use this interaction with the client in order for them to have a sexual experience, right? So how does a person, for, so let's say there's a woman sex therapist uh, teaching tantric sex to students and she has 10 students a day. How does she actually have these interactions with people and actually experience orgasms or whatever else that may occur during these interactions? How does she actually do it without there being some external involvement in the process? There must be a part of her soul that is still detuned from herself because in the end, she would just desire to have sex with one person. She wouldn't feel like she's desirous of having sex with others. So there has to be an emotion within him or her that causes them to be attracted to this kind of therapy. And that emotion is going, going to not be healed until they work through that issue emotionally. So while they may help de armor you, like the same like goes, or reduce the, increase the allowance of vulnerability in you towards sexual matters, they are actually also projecting many other emotions at you, which may also be damaging you right at the same moment. And so what I'm suggesting is don't involve yourself in forms of therapy that have the potentiality of damaging you at exactly the same time. One of the reasons I'm asking, actually the, the post that just came up when, um, when I heard what this lady was saying, but uh, I actually had the opportunity to train as a tantric masseuse. Yep. And, um, and I was actually woken up in the night about three in the morning and it was like I've been spoken to, um, you've really got to go and do this and um, it's almost like if you said the spirits sort of saying, you've got to do this, right? Because um, this is going to be really good for you and you can make a lot of money and blah, 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 blah. Exactly. And, uh, and I was very suspicious of it, so holding it away and wanting to actually listen, come to this particular talk yeah. for ages to yeah. wait for. Yeah. <laughs> And to talk to you about um, about that, but that's clarified a lot of things for me. Yeah. So here's yourself. What was happening was there was a spirit who felt that you might be suggestive to the idea of entering into a, as a tantric massage therapist or a tantric therapist. And because these spirits are very very interested in having as many people as possible in that place where they can have sex with lots of different people under the guise of money, right? They, of course, want to heavily influence you, so they will come and give you messages, they will give you all these indications. And many of us, because we're influenced in a new age way with regard to spirits, we think, oh, that must be the universe telling me I need to do that. Do you know what I mean? So we go along with that. But actually, it's the spirits manipulating us through whatever injury we may have, right, to cause us to even consider it, and then, and, and then get us involved in the process. And once we get involved in the process, it's very difficult to stop. Because they become more powerful. They become more powerful. Our sexual powerfulness, which attracted them, our powerlessness, which attracted them, starts being generated more and more. Th our sexual power becomes stronger. And as a result, we become addicted to the feeling of sexual power. And we can't give it up. It becomes like a cigarette that I've got to have every day. And you'll find that many tantric sex experts therapists finish up having sex with all sorts of different people at all sorts of different times. And, and are totally addicted to that process, and it's totally because of the spirit interaction that they are addicted to the process. Right. Um, now, the reason why I became very interested in the Tantra to begin with was yep. 10 years ago, um, with a, a sexual partner of mine, yep. uh, I was experiencing um, something that I've never ever read about, I yep. actually haven't even read about it since, um, and that is the, the chakra connection that you're talking about during sex. And um, uh, actually, this, this guy so was, was an older guy and he was having some um, impotency problems. But that didn't seem to really matter. What I did was um, I felt that it was almost like a, an energetic penis come out of my soul plexus, yeah. which I was um, making love with him, with this uh, energy. And um, it was quite incredibly powerful, not like anything I felt physically. Exactly. And um, and quite remarkably, he became erect. And then when he came, um, you know, had 
they've had physical sex with me, which is the most incredible experience I've ever had and never had again. Yes. He had some deep anger issues with women, actually. Right? And you know that you attract angry men. Right? So angry men are attracted to you. And what actually happened was that sexually, um, his impotence was actually caused by his anger. But, but what was happening is he was also connected at the spirit level to his own body. And the spirit, at the spirit level could engage in sexual interactions. And all that happened was a spirit connected to him in that interaction, heightened the experiences of his spirit body, which actually caused his erection, and then allowed this interaction to occur between the two of you. Right? So the truth is you can have that kind of sexual interaction with a person without spirits, but in that particular instance there was a spirit involved in the process. What about my side of it? That was there a spirit um, as yeah. well? Yeah, there was. A male spirit. Oh, okay. Yes, actually. That's why you felt like there was yeah. this penis inside right. of you. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Still, um, I'm still quite... I'd really like to um, ask you two how, um, how it is with you on the Shastra level uh, when you both make love. And it's not as good as it could be because... It depends on what emotions are there at the time. Yeah, so, so we, we have some days where we might have sex four or five times a day and it'd be really, really good. Other times when we go without for a week on end or whatever and not be very good when we when we when we make love because because of the emotions that we're working through at the time. And the emotions would be blocking certain chakras. Yes. Uh, so on a good day when your chakras are unblocked both of you. Mine are never unblocked. Okay. Not yet anyway. So and I I am still working through heaps of stuff about shame sexual shame so 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 would, would even though i had spiritual influence there if i could achieve that without the spiritual influence which of course happened because of my emotional injuries um would it be similar like um and yep. I, I couldn't imagine actually connecting in that kind of way with every shark would be incredible yeah it would it is like obviously we've had nearly two thousand years of experience of that that a lot of which mary can't remember but i can <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and uh, like I cry about it every time I think about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, AJ was writing the outline and crying about it. I was writing this outline for yesterday and crying about it. Because just missing it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, the, the issue is that yes, you can achieve that kind of experience yourself. You can certainly achieve it by yourself but only by removing the emotional injuries towards men and women, you know, the, the intergenerational transgender emotional injuries that we have. And so if you can allow yourself to do that, you will actually obtain these experiences without spirit's influence. But the majority of tantric sexual experiences that are occurring in these kind of classroom type environments are actually heavily uh, dominated by spirits who are just having fun sexually uh, because they can't do the same thing in the spirit world. So you're actually getting raped, but not knowing it, and feeling it's a good experience. Oh, by the spirits. By yeah. the spirits, yeah. yeah. And that's why many times when we have those experiences, and many times when you go into a room with those kind of things going on, there's this really sleazy feeling that most people feel right at the beginning, and they've got to actually overcome that sleazy feeling to become involved. The sleazy feeling that you have is actually there's a lot more going on than what's just in the room. There's a lot of spirit involvement going on right at that same moment. Yeah. And there are literally millions of spirits wanting more and more tantric things going on or you know, people who are willing to have lots of sex going on with all different partners in order for them to experience their own sexual issues.